Good morning, this is Alexandra Talleyrand for Abolition News Network, May 30th, 1868. We have a special visitor with us today who toured the United States in the spring of 1842 and who has just published his book, American Notes. Even as an outsider from England, he has a lot to say about the institution of slavery. England's top writer, best known for David Copperfield, Oliver Twist, Tale of Two Cities, and The Christmas Carol. Let's welcome Charles Dickens. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Flum, would you get our distinguished English visitor some English breakfast tea? Mr. Dickens, I've always been a fan of yours in reading about life in London. However, your purpose in being invited here is to talk about your five-month visit to America in the spring of 1842. Well, I'd rather start with Boston and Massachusetts because it gave me such a favorable impression of America. And it was an extreme contrast to the South. The city of Boston was beautiful. White houses, private dwellings, large, elegant shops. The intellectual refinements of the city are probably due to the influence of the University of Cambridge. The professors are gentlemen of learning. The whole tone of Boston is one of politeness, courtesy, and good breeding, and everywhere white, freshly painted houses. I have your tea for you. So I would like to hear about the voyage from Liverpool and the rough seas. Well, Ms. Plump, we want to hear about what our visitor has to say about what he saw of slaves and slavery. So let's start with your first impression. Alexandra. Uh, can I call you Alexandra? Please. Great. Uh, in words, what I saw was like painting a very dark picture. It was when I was going from Washington to Richmond, Virginia, that slavery really made an impression. Barns, outhouses, log cabins, moldering and patched. Some roofless, well, walls crumbling, fences unrepaired, not like rural Massachusetts with its white houses. Well, that sounds and looks awful. Um, what about Richmond, Virginia? Uh, at Richmond, there was an era of decay, gloom hovering over the town. Which it's inseparable from slavery. What do you mean by gloom? Well, it was like something dark below the surface. The image's decay forced itself upon my mind, and I can remember them with depressing influence. And the faces of the people were very low. The scale of intellectual expression, the darkness, was not of the skin, but of the mind, caused by the laws against slavery. This meets the stranger's eye at every turn. I hope you're not exaggerating. Aren't there some slaveholders that treat their slaves humanely? as a slave wouldn't be very valuable to their master if they were being tortured to death like we hear. Miss Talleyrand, let me open your eyes to what I saw. The class of slaveholders, oh, they deny the horrors of the system. Despite evidence of torture, they would gladly go to civil war with the sole purpose to perpetuate slavery, to whip, work, torture slaves, unhindered by any law. Freedom to them to oppress their slaves and the savage merciless and cruel. They take pride in a land where voluntary servitude by white people is shunned as a disgrace, where the land must be administered to by black slaves. But any moderate views? Well, I'll tell you about moderates. There are those who've come into possession of slaves through trading and admit the dangers to society, but they're not going to do anything about the system because the slaves are necessary to them. They say it's not as bad as we in England take it to be. Well, your words are refreshingly blunt. Um, do you have anything else to say in conclusion? i like to add that the seas over America can be pretty rough. I got seasick from your chapter in that book. We're talking about the rough seas of, seas of slavery and how sick you can get. She's right. The miserable aristocracy spawned by false republic created by the slaveholders was enough to make you seasick. We have to blot out the friends of slavery, the brutal lust, cruelty, abuse of power, and then we can ask if it is in the interest of the master to lash and maim slaves in whose lives he has absolute control. Well, Mr. Dickens, you have described slavery with such well-chosen words. To our viewers, you can read Charles Dickens' impression of America in his book, American Notes, just published May 1868. This is Alexandra Talleyrand for Abolition News Network saying good morning.
I'd like to say something in conclusion. Sure. After I wrote American Notes, I want to say about Americans that, that they are by nature frank, brave, cordial, hospitable, and affectionate. Cultivation and refinement seem but to enhance their warmth of heart and ardent enthusiasm. And it is in the passion of these later qualities, in a most remarkable degree, which renders an educated American as one of enduring and generous of friends. Can I get your autograph in my book? Uh, certainly. And what is your name? Jane. Jane. All right, Jane. Have you read the book? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Many great, times. great. To Jane. Should I say love, Charles? Sure. Just Charles. Okay. I'm glad you read it. Read, you. read all of them, all of my books. I'd love to. And thank, thank you. you for purchasing the book. Good morning.